the lighthouse at sea. He's the rock of all ages. He's a friend to me. He's the rock of all ages. He's a friend to me. Well, good morning. Glad to be with you today. If you don't mind, I'd like to take a few minutes and share some things from the Word of God that I hope will be a help to you. And uh, I've got some verses for my life that, that I keep near to me. I wish I could say I had the whole Bible memorized. I wish I could say even I had one chapter of the Bible memorized, but in truth, I don't. But I found that in my spiritual tool chest, if you would, that I've got some verses that are, that are dear to me, some verses that I use often, that I pull out and, and use on a regular basis. Verses like, I can do all things through Christ. Christ who strengthens me. If God be for me, who can be against me? My God can supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And, and that, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, another verse says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy in, in our time of need. Just, just some basic scriptures that, that I plug into situations and needs in my personal prayer life, my personal walk with the Lord, the circumstances of my life. But another uh, couple of verses that I use Use is found in the book of Proverbs, and, and that's what I want to look at today, if you'll join me, and look at a couple of verses that I pull out often, especially those times in my life when it's a decision time, and, and God doesn't have a clear word in, in His Word, like He has a clear word, shalt thou lie? Well, the Bible tells us not to lie. Shall we steal? The Bible clearly tells us not to steal, and, and the list goes on of such verses, but there's other things in our life, things like, well, you know, what color of car should I buy, or what make and model of car should I buy? Or should I buy this house or buy another house? Or if somebody's looking for a spouse, Lord, which one to, to be and to, and to pursue to be my spouse? Things such as this where uh, we don't necessarily have a direct word of God. Nonetheless, I believe that this couple of verses are some principles that will apply to our life that whenever it comes to those crossroads of decision, uh, that God can uh, take these principles applied to our life and use them to give us direction for our path. Listen, if you would, as I read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And it says this, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. If you need direction for some paths that you're on, well, well, God is here with you today and God wants to speak to you. In this couple of verses, he says three basic things that we do that we can do. And if we do them, he promises that he will direct our past. First of all, it says, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Secondly, it says, lean not unto our own understanding. And the third thing, it says, acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. And so it is that we can learn to apply those. I think it will make a big difference. So notice if you would, it starts off. And first of all, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. God has so many promises to us as believers. If we will just learn to trust in him. Let me just share a few if I can. It says in Psalm 32, 10, it says, many are the woes of the wicked. But the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in the Lord. God says, if we'll just trust in him, that, that his love, that, that wonderful love of God, that it'll surround us, that it'll, it will guide us, it will guard us, it will encourage us. Uh, it's, it's that wonderful love of God that will come and be about us if we will just trust in the Lord. Psalm 125, 1 says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. Wouldn't you like to have a life that's solid, that's stable, that, that is not wishy-washy? God says if we will be a man that trusts in the Lord, we will be like Mount Zion, that we will not be shaken, that we will be stable, that we will endure forever. Some of the promises to those of us that will trust in the Lord. It says in Proverbs 29, it says, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. We don't have to fear man. And when we do fear men, it, it comes back to haunt us. It comes back to hurt us. But if we will just trust in the Lord, our Lord will keep us safe. Uh, the list go on and on and on throughout Scripture of the promises that He makes to us that are, are willing to trust Him. So first of all, the Bible is full of promises to those who trust the Lord. Secondly, there's a fact that sometimes in our life that we have worry, we have anxiety, we have a, uh, just a, a sense of fearfulness in our life. And, and many times when we 
do. Uh, we just have a sense that we want to come and, and, um, uh, and, and get worried over about things in our life, even though we might say that we trust God, but in reality, we are not trusting God. In reality, we're saying the words of trusting God, but we're not trusting God. Well, how do I know I'm not trusting God? Because of the presence of worry, because of the presence of anxiety, because of the fearful spirit that might be within me. Something I need to learn to do is whenever that starts to happen, that I need to say, Lord, I, I need to not attack anxiety, not attack fear, not attack worry. What I need to do is not focus on the things I'm worried about and the circumstances I'm worrying about, but focusing upon the God that we can trust in. Because even though we say that we might trust God with our mouth, if we're not finding peace, then our heart has not caught up with us. Our, our heart's not trusting Him. It not only says trust in the Lord, but it says trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Whenever the, the worry is still there, then our, then our heart has not caught up with our words. So it is we need to be a people that learn to trust God. And when, whenever we do that, to get our minds off the worry and put our mind on the faithfulness of God, that we've got a God that is trustworthy. We've got a God that we can put our trust in. We need to change the way we think about our God. It says in verse uh, two of chapter 12 of Romans, it says this, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We must change the way we're thinking. If we will, be tra if we will change our mind, that it will transform us. Whenever we start thinking the way that God thinks, whenever we start seeing the God the way that, that he is, it will definitely make a difference. And you say, well, Jim, how do I change that? How do I indeed go about changing my mind and, and finding myself to increase my trust in the Lord? Let me share a few other verses. It says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God also says the word of God is able to equip the man of God unto every good work. If we want to change our relationship with God, if we want our trust to grow in Him, the first thing we need to do is the fact that we need to get into the Word of God. We need to stay in the Word of God. Let its thoughts become our thoughts. And so it is as, as we do that, it will transform us. And so open up your Bible, read your Bible, meditate on your Bible, memorize your Bible, uh, believe your Bible. And as you start to do this, God will start changing who you are but God will also change the way that, that you think and what the way that you think about him. We've got to come to realize that we've got a God that we can put our trust in. And if we don't put our trust in him, then we're either putting our trust in ourselves, or putting our trust in the world or putting our trust in something else out there. But God wants us to put our trust in all of our heart, with all of our heart, to put our trust in him. So one way is to spend time with God. Another thing that will help our faith to grow is the fact that we need to spend time with people of faith. Uh, godly people, God-fearing people, people filled with the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of people that are believers and but yet not very near the Lord and you can be around them and not have much difference between their life and an unbeliever, it's sad to say, but, but I encourage you, if you want your faith to grow, draw near to others that are on fire for Jesus. Draw near to others that have a deep love for Him, that have a passion for Him and whenever you're around them, they, they just kind of ignite your flame within you. They blow that wind of the Holy Spirit that's living through them on, on your life. They will encourage you. They will strengthen your faith. They will help you get your mind on who God is and your mind off of what you can do, but putting your mind on what God can do. And as you do that, as you read the Word of God, as you're around the people of God, indeed you'll find that your faith and your trust in God is going to grow. Another tool that's easy to use is the fact that we can listen to music that builds us up. We're so blessed in our community and, and uh, that we've got some wonderful wonderful Christian radio stations and, and in them we can listen to the Word of God sung to us. I don't know about you, but many times it's easier for me to memorize a song and the lines of a song than it is for me to quote scripture. And so that's one of the neat things about the songs that we listen to. If we're listening to the godly songs, or listening to the songs that praise the greatness of our God, the trustworthiness of our God, the faithfulness of our God, before long we'll be singing those songs. Before long we'll be having them that record played in our mind. And as we do, it will encourage us, it will equip us, it will strengthen us. And little by little and day by day and week by week, we will find that our faith and our trust in God will start to grow. So don't you think it's about time that we, we get off the fence, that we quit trying to straddle the fence, that we come and say, Lord, I want to learn to put my trust in you. So the first thing we can do to help find a sense of direction when we just don't really know what to do is the fact that we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart. 
But first of all, it's trust in the Lord with all our heart. But secondly, it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And then it says, lean not unto your own understandings. So oftentimes we, we are comfortable with things that we understand, but, but not comfortable with things that we don't understand. And, and many times God calls us to be about a task, calls us to be about serving him. And, and as he does, it's a task that we're comfortable with. It's a, it's a task that we understand what it is that he's calling us to do. It's something that, that we've done before. It's, it's something that, uh, that we've had experience to them. It's, it's something that we can do and that financially we can afford to do. Now, if you're like I am, usually it's pretty easy to trust in the Lord whenever it's situations like this, uh, then it's, uh, you know, I understand what God wants me to do. I understand where God wants me to go. I understand where God, how God wants me to pay for this or whatever that might be. Those situations are easy, but this scripture doesn't say lean unto your own understandings. It says lean not unto your own understandings. Because see, God oftentimes calls us to trust him even when we don't know exactly what it is that he's wanting to do. Uh, different things. Sometimes God will call us to give and, and you'll hear that sense of the Holy Spirit speaking to you, nudging you to give to a cause or to give to a purpose. And, and as you do, all of a sudden you start thinking, but Lord, I hardly have enough money to pay my bills and, and you're calling me to give. Lord, I, I don't understand. Well, my friend, the scripture is telling us when the spirit is leading us, even when we don't understand, don't lean on your lack of understanding and don't lean on your, don't lean on your own understanding, trust in God. What if God calls you to praise him in the midst of life's circumstances that are difficult times, those times where maybe you've lost a loved one or those times that you've lost a job or those times that, that you, your heart is broken? God might be calling us just to praise him in the midst of this, in all things that we're to praise the Lord. We'll say, well, Lord, I just don't understand why you would have me praise you in such a situation as this. Well, don't lean to what you don't understand. Don't lean on that, but lean into the God that you trust. Don't trust God, trust God whenever you don't know what to do. Whenever God's calling you to do something that you don't understand what he's calling you to do, we need to learn to trust him. We've got so many examples throughout scripture that were that examples of this. Take Abraham, for instance. God came to Abraham and asked him to leave his home, asked him to leave his family and go to a city that he knew not where that city was. And Abraham left. He didn't say, well, God, I don't understand where we're going, Lord. I don't know if I can afford to go there, Lord. I don't know what might lie ahead of me. No, Abraham did not lean on what he understood, but he leaned upon the God that understands more than he does and trusted him with all his heart. And, and so the father of our faith, Abraham, he took off and followed him. I think also Joshua, whenever God led them to cross the, 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 the Jordan River and whenever they crossed that river, uh, there was Jericho that lie ahead of them. And, and God told Jer Joshua, he said, Joshua, I want to, have to get the people and I want you to march around that wall seven days uh, as you do that. And so nonetheless, for seven days, they marched around that wall and all they were armed with was a trumpet. And so they marched and so it is they did and, and they did as God called them to do. And they, they went the seventh day and they blew the trumpets and they shouted unto the Lord and the walls fell down. I'm so thankful that Joshua and the people of Israel followed God even they didn't really, even though they didn't really understand what God was up to, they trusted him none the same. I think of Gideon whenever Gideon was called to come against the army of the Midianites. The Midianites had been coming in and ravaging their, their crops and their, their livestock year after year. God came to Gideon and said, I want you to lead my people. And so Gideon rose up and led the people. And so thousands of the Midianites were coming against the Israelites. And all that God allowed Gideon to take into that battle with him were 300 soldiers with a trumpet, with a, uh, a, a, a vase, and in that vase was a candle. And though that they were armed with very little, Gideon trusted God, even though he didn't understand how God was gonna use such a small army to defeat such a large army, but he trusted God. I think also of David, whenever David fought Goliath, and their big Goliath was shouting out threats to all the Israelites. And as he was shouting out threats to them, David wouldn't back down. David stepped up. And all he depended upon was what God had done for him before. 
Even though he didn't know exactly how he's going to win that battle, he trusted God with all his heart. He didn't lean unto his own understanding. And so it is for us. What is it that God might be calling you to be about today? Do you sense a sense of ministry in some area or a sense of obedience in some area and say, Lord, I just don't know how I can do this. Well, don't trust what you know. Trust what God knows. And if you sense that God is calling you to do it, then I encourage you and encourage myself, let us step up and let us step out and let us find our faith put in God with all of our heart and let him instruct us and lead us as we go, not leaning on our own understanding, but leaning on him. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Number two, don't lean on all that you know, lean on him. And the third thing, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Basically what God is saying through that statement is, we need to invite God to be into everything that we're about. The big things of life, call upon God and say, God, I wanna invite you to have a part in this. I want you to enable me. I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to help me. It might be the big things of life or it, it might just be the small things in life, just little bitty things that you wouldn't think would, that God would take time to consider. But I'm telling you, even in the small things, God's a God that will look after you and take care of you. Remember a couple of years ago, a friend of mine was working in a pasture next to mine and his piece of equipment broke down. And so I walked over to see what was going on and another neighbor walked over to see what was going on. And before long, the three of us were trying to fix this piece of equipment and we couldn't figure out how to fix it. We kept trying this and trying that. It was an old hot day. We were hot, we were sweaty, we were aggravated. And, and up walks one of the neighbor's wives and saw the situation. I never forget what she said. She said, well, have you all prayed yet? I wanted to say, silly woman, go to your house. Yeah, I was so embarrassed because we hadn't prayed. We hadn't even thought about praying. And so we all stopped, kind of shamed into it, unfortunately. But we acknowledged God and we invited God to come into that situation. And, and this is the truth. We, we said our amens. Within two minutes, we saw what the situation was. And within five minutes, we had fixed the problem. Uh, God cares about the big things, yes but God cares about the small things of our life. Acknowledge him, invite him into your life. God cares about the spiritual things, but God also cares about the practical things. In every area, let us be wise enough to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy in our time of need. Big needs, small needs, spiritual needs, practical needs. Come running to God and invite him in. And God makes a promise if we will be a people that trust Him with all our hearts, if we will be a people that don't lean on what we understand, if we will be a people that invites Him into every situation, to every activity, God promises us this. It says He will direct our paths. So my word of encouragement is this. Put these verses in your tool test, in your spiritual tool chest. Proverbs chapter uh, three, verses five and six. Pull it out often and let it be a reminder that we need to grow in our faith, in our trust in the Lord. We need to learn to live with trusting God with all of our heart. We need to learn to lean on God and lean on what He knows, not on what we know. And the last thing is we need to invite Him into every situation and let Him direct our paths. Let me pray if I might. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. and Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that you're a God that wants to be involved in every aspect of our life, Lord not just the spiritual and the big things, but Lord, the practical and the small things. So Father, I wanna pray that you help us to learn to trust you, not just a little bit of trust, but a whole lot of trust with, with all of our hearts. Let that be our goal to seek to trust you more and more, day by day, situation by situation. God, you are a trustworthy God. You've shown yourself to be that way to us so many times. Lord, forgive us for our lack of trust and help us grow in our trust of you. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. I have good news to bring. That is why I sing all my joy with you. I share. I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship and go sailing out through the air. I'm going to take a trip in the old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. I'm gonna shout and sing until all heavens ring when I'm bidding this world
Dios soy de Dios.